आप जो सिस्टम ठंडा बताया ना वहां से वो नहीं जा रहे दिक्कत हो रहा Sir, we will, uh, good morning, sir. We will wait for another one or two minutes so that participants are joining. Sure, 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 sure. 40 minutes is my presentation. Can I take? Yes, yes. Uh, maximum 40 minutes, sir. <laughs> okay, uh, no problem. We use it. No problem. We will be very yeah, much because 11.40, I will stop at 11.40. Yes, yes. Actually, uh, before that, I will take two minutes for the recap. Oh, okay. Sure. What sure. were the things for yesterday? That thing I will tell. Uh, Thereafter, that your introduction will be there, then you will see. You go uh, say eleven five to eleven forty five, no problem, sir. Okay, eleven forty. Right. Okay, thank you. Mr. Lamprang, you are ready? Yes, sir. So just within a minute or two, we'll just uh, you see right now uh, twenty has has already joined, and some more say another few. Then we did so you wait for another one minute, then you start the program. Okay, sir. Okay, Dr. Lamprang, we can go ahead. Okay. Good morning to all the participants and the panelists. Three days training program under on capacity and health on disaster risk and resilience in education sector organized by the National Institute of Disaster Management, Minister of Minister of Home Affairs, Government of India, in collaboration with the Northeast Hill University, Shillong. Today we are going to start the second day's program. Now I would like to request Dr. A.L. A.L. Halder, consultant of NIDM, for for uh, recapitulation of yesterday's program. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Lamprang. Now it is good good morning to all, especially our the expert from eminent scientist from NRSC, Hyderabad. Right now, he's retired fellow, but he's a very uh, severe experience. So it is good morning to him, along with the other uh, panelists, including our head, Professor Surya Prakas, then one, uh, the rest of my colleague, as well as the attendees from all over the India, as well as this uh, Nehu, that is uh, Northeast Hill University, Silong. I welcome again in this second day session. Now, you might be uh, knowing those who had joined yesterday and today also that the training program that was scheduled for three days on capacity enhancement for disaster risk reduction and resilience in education sector we have this uh, training is in collaboration with nehu and today is the second day so in the second day three eminent speakers are there that for that dr lamprang will tell you now what was the proceedings for yesterday that thing I'll briefly say in a, a minute or two. So yesterday that inaugural session was there. Uh, during the inaugural session from NIDM, that's a National Institute of Disaster Management, Professor Surya Prakas, he told, uh, he told about the program of NIDM 
and that how the India could be make resilient for different uh, disaster. If we cannot uh, prevent it, we should be prepared for that. We should be a uh, lot of structure for the resilient structure should be made for all those disasters. It may be natural disaster or man-made disasters. There are various types of disaster it is happening in India and one or other thing it is going on in this vast country, India, more than 28 states and eight uh, territorial uh, units are there. So especially the Northeast is very prone to the earthquake and uh, some other things also, as well as this uh, chemical, uh, as well as this forest fire and other, other, a lot of other disasters are also there. That for that, and we should make the student uh, I mean, ready for the awareness and they should be aware of the uh, various uh, disaster and so the preparedness and uh, should be taken place before the disaster and for that doctor uh, professor surapakas he told that one program is going on in this university with the affiliation of university and different institution that is in uh, iuindrr indian universities and institution network for disaster risk and resilience a lot of uh, all over india a lot of universities are connected and activities are going on Thereafter, uh, that from the Nehu side, Professor, uh, that is Devesh Valia, he has given the special address. He told that that mitigation of disaster to be done, and we should identify the what are the risk, and uh, that he told that uh, this northeast is especially very vulnerable zone for earthquake and other things. Say zone five, it is falling in seismic zone. And we should be aware uh, for various things before the disaster. And after disaster, we should uh, assess the damages. And thereafter, this uh, rehabilitation measure to be taken. And so disaster risk, risk and resilience, for that also he urged to the student as well as participant. And after that, the first speaker, that was there, uh, there are two speakers were there. That is Dr. G. Raja Sekhar from NRC Hyderabad. He is a group head, Forestry and Ecology Division group, NRSC. And he talked about the role of remote sensing for forest fire management. So he has given an overview of recent uh, large fire in South California. He also talked a lot about the different uh, I mean, fire phenomena in India in different states. Especially, he has highlighted in Uttarakhand and Chennai, and that is uh, Thiyakenu place. One place is there in Chennai that he told about the incidents in that forest incident events are there. He has given the modest instruments what you has enlightened the monitoring of forest and agriculture fires as a, their significance, and he talked a lot about the forest fire scenario. As I told you, in different states, especially Thenis area of Tamil Nadu, he talked the present day very serious phenomena is there in the stubble burning, that is in endo Indo Gangetic plain to clear the left residue before the next crop harvesting. And for that, a lot of pollution is taking place, especially now it is in Delhi, a lot of smoke is there and pollution is there, it's a very severe severe climate so he talked about a lot thereafter the second speaker was there professor kakoli benarji from ceo central university of Odisha, Koraput. she talked the concept of exotic and invasive species that is a natural disaster he urged that these biological disasters are also equally disaster like natural disasters also so for that also, she urged that some early warning to be made, and it is going on obviously in India. And she said about the IAS, that is invasive alien species. And this is very serious thing is going on. And what he has listed the IAS and causes of this IAS, this invasive alien species. And given a route, that how it is coming 
from uh, foreign country to India, especially the ships through the ships by, by uh, for the transporting of the good goods. The ships are using and the Allen species are transporting from the foreign country to India also. This biological invasion may be considered is a form of biological pollution, significant component on human caused global environmental change. So this was a yesterday's two lecture and one inaugural session was there. So this was the yesterday's proceedings. Now today we'll go forward with the other disaster. Our eminent scientists are here from this NRSC and, and this GSI and also from NIDM. It is there now. I'll hand over to uh, Dr. Lamfran, Lamfran to take the stage for carry out the further proceedings. Okay, Dr. Lamfran, please. Okay, sir. Thank you, Dr. Elmer, for, the, for your captation of yesterday's program. Now I would like to call uh, Dr. V. Banu Murthy for the topic like the space technology. Space uh, technology for the flood management. Uh, Dr. B. Banu, uh, Banu Murthy about his uh, achievement. Actually, Dr. V. Banu Murthy uh, is the former associate director of NRSC and ISRO, Government of India. His qualification is BE Civil and MS in Special Information Technology, PhD in uh, Emergency Management. He is a soldier technical and uh, manager responsibility in remote sense uh, in National Remote Sensing Center of ISRO for 37 years in various capacities. He is a play, uh, play a key role in application of remote sensing and GIS for natural resource management, sustained development, and disaster risk reduction. He is interact with the minister and the center and the state government to popularize the space technology application. The responsibility in establishment of decision support center at the NRS, which is a single window for assessing the geospatial product and the service for the disaster management. As a project director, his responsibility for the successful, successful implementation of the natural database for the emergency management of MD EM, the, uh, the, the, the focal point and the key interface for MHA, NDMA, and MBA, and the uh, capsule for the NRS and the ISRO. Identification as the nodal officer from the Department of uh, Department Space for the, for the National Crisis Management Group and also become a cabinet secretary in New Delhi. Attended the various conference in India and abroad as, a, as an invited speaker and a key player in the inter, international chapter, uh, chapter and the Sentinel Asia activity toward disaster risk and reduction. Awarded as a young scientist awarded from Indian Society of Remote Sensing. Another like the ISRO Team Excellent Award for the Disaster Risk Reduction Activity. And the next slide that is Roman Award. His publication, more than 40 publications in the pre review national and the international journal. Uh, Dr. V. Benus uh, Murthy, sir, uh, uh, over to you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Good morning to all the panelists as well as the participants online. Now the time in my watch is 11.20 and I've been given time after 11.45. It seems approximately about 25 minutes. I think I need to cut short some of my presentation slides. I will try to squeeze in. And let me tell you first of all to speak to you. I'm very happy to speak to the education sector because anybody is coming, a lawyer or an engineer or a doctor or a Chartered account, anybody, he comes from an education institute. The department is the most important department, is the educational department in the country. Because it is more stronger, it should be strongest, so that the output coming out of that will be very strong. 
And I got very good association with the North Station sector, Assam as well as Meghalaya, North Eastern Hill University. A lot of the people, students, teachers, students, PG faculty are the audience and uh, for this lecture, I will try to give you a glimpse of what are the space data sets that they can do for flood disaster management. I hope, let me share my presentation first. Uh, hope presentation is clear. Presentation is clear. Audio is clear. Yes. Okay. Now I will go. Yes, sir. It is clear. Now, yeah, with regard to the flood incidents, let me first talk about the flood incidents. Normal flooding, what you see in Brahmaputra, you are from Northeast, you know better than anybody else about the flooding. The normal monsoon river flooding, what happens in Ganga and Brahmaputra rivers here. Second type of flooding, you'll get urban flood, heavy rainfall, what has happened few days back in uh, Tamil Nadu. Because of a cloudburst or heavy rainfall, a sudden flood occurs as well. Third is a flash flood, especially some of the rivers like Jaldaka, Torsa, Raida, Tista, North North Bengal rivers. These are all flashy in nature. The time of concentration is less than the forecasting time, then the flood is going to occur. You don't have a warning, so they are very flashy. The time of concentration is very short. And floods also due to breach of artificial blockage that are caused in the streams or rivers, like Parachu, like Lunak River in Sikkim. Or you can say in Leh also recently, one more Putkal Lake, which are, these are all blockades have happened, artificial blockades, and a stream is building up and everything. Floods also due to cyclones is likely to happen. And glacial outburst, these especially glacial lakes, which have been blast is another important aspects. These are most of the common incidents of floods that are going. And this is a statistics. I just want a glimpse. I don't want to spend time because the time is very short. The flood problem in the country is the most common annual feature in the country. And the millions of hectares of area is affected. And crop area is damaged. The damages uh, with regard to the public utilities are in course thousands of crores which are going to be there and everything there are flood management management measures that are given by rashtriya bhar ayog that is flood control flood forecasting non structural measures as well as structural measures flood forecasting flood warning flood proofing living with the floods flood plain zoning these are all the non structural whereas structural especially embankments construction of reservoirs watershed management points so just to go to any test book you will be understanding what are the structural flood control measures and other things. To manage the floods and everything, you have to set up modules you must have. One is a reporting mechanism. Now the Central Water Commission is the nodal ministry in the country for forecasting, which disseminates the flood information to the public through mass media as well as customized information to the respective departments. And you must have a mechanism to get a real-time information. Today, a lot of technology is available mobile technology and everything, you'll get the real-time field information which for assessment work. And for assessment, you require a basic model, is an empirical model or a, a statistical model, or it can be a deterministic, whatever the type of model. Even a knowledge-based model, you take it. You must have assessment of the situation, how many people are being affected, how much relief material you have to airdrop or such type of things for resource assessment. And you have to identify the resources, where are you from your civil supply, go down, what are the material that is available, and you have to mobilize, like NDR mobilizes stone and everything. For all these components to assess, you require a set of data sets, especially the type of emerging plans for evacuation. If you want to evacuate the people, you require what is the transport uh, means are available, what are the shelter, what are the optimum plans and everything. Relief materials, air dropping of food packets, or shelter, survival needs, food, water, medicine, and everything. Medical casualty, you know, those who have been sick, you have to take them to medical casualty, whether it is a mass casualty or, or an individual casualty and everything. Contingency operation, which I am not going to discuss about here, especially with regard to the CBR and everything. These are the management. What this data sex will provide you with regard to this? And uh, this is coming in my way. Let me keep it. Alive. And with regard to the preparedness, 
it will from the space data sets you will have rainfall estimations from meteorological satellite information rainfall estimations can be made and flood forecasting especially when you go for a cs model or something like that you require land use land cover and everything you will get flood forecasting and uh, spatial warning systems spatial warning will get a digital elevation models which can be developed from the space data sets by which we can translate the gauge level into a spatial domain give a spatial warning lot of database can be generated because i am addressing the research students or the faculty people and a lot of research can be done by these uh, institutions education institutions please kindly remember whatever the research that you do it should be translated into operational activity and must be able to utilize by the respective departments that is more important rather than to get your degree or a btech or mtech or a phd it is one part of it and whatever the research it should be translated into the real domain then only the fruits of the research work or contribution from a, a, a education department will go into the operational flood management activities and everything spatial warning and similarly with regard to the response near relative flood inundation mass space can provide pre-event or post-event comparing all those things so you know whether the flood is progression or recession is taking place or persistence rate how many how much jewelish the flood is persisting you can find out it will be useful space data sets for quick damage assessment we can do and uh, space communication especially for emergency communication all type of communication fails only have to depend on the space communication and everything apart from that navigational uh, needs you can find out from space you can get navigation so that you can give location based services and everything with regard to the mitigation hazard zonation which are over a period of time the flood inundation information can be composed in a productive way to generate the flood hazard zonation maps vulnerability assessments can be made with the space data sets and risk assessment monitoring of flood control works these are very important to avoid flood control breaches to the uh, floods, uh, breach of the embankments and flood control works and river configuration is very important, especially after the flow flood, you must know the river configuration, whether he's attacking the bank and everything. And bank erosion is another important phenomenon, especially in Brahmaputra, you can see a lot of bank erosion takes place and everything. Apart from that, a lot of hydrometeorological and uh, hydrological geophysical parameters can be derived from space data sex. Please kindly visit ISRO Bhuvan site. There is a Bhuvan stores. Whatever I am speaking, most of the space data sets, databases, geophysical parameters, meteorological and hydrological data inputs on different scales, each is available. Huge amount of data is available on the one which you can do continue research you don't need anywhere just you can download out of the other things and this is a glimpse of our satellite systems the land and water satellite systems we have got today we got resource at our micro satellite systems basically at observation in provides and everything and we also got high resolution to address the uh, location specific uh, needs like breach in environments or localized urban flooding you can get the from high resolution satellites like cartosat which is uh, sub meter uh, resolution you are getting it and ocean parameters which is very important hydrological cycle the ocean parameters which from ocean sat information we can get it so altica saral altica that is uh, uh, altimeter data, which is the mean surface height and stream gauge information, also you can find out from the Saral Altica and uh, inside type of series, megatropics. These gives weather related parameters, meteorological information, as well as for rainfall estimates and everything. And uh, what what is apart you know, from this, we have got navigational. That is a navig system, Indian navigational system, where we can find out the location of a particular point and everything. He, this is Gagan. He is a uh, augmented uh, GPS aid geo augmented navigation. He is basically meant for uh, airports of that of India. But however, using a Gagan dongle, you can uh, map. These also you can use for uh, geo uh, tagging purpose or. Uh, getting just like a geo, uh, jeep or uh, navic services type of thing can do with gagan also these space data sets what you will get it is inside type of satellite systems will give you a continental picture which is mostly used for meteorological purposes 
different rainfall estimation purposes or cyclone uh, early warning purposes and everything high temporal resolution they are having and low spatial resolution at every 15 minutes you can have a picture and everything and the uh, earth observation satellites like uh, AVIP sensor data or something like that large swath information can be seen at a single point instant of time if you want to see entire inundation in brahmaputra river at a single shot you require a large swath satellite image at ganga you want to know what is the flood inundation you get a large swath similarly if you want to make a district level planning or a particular district or flood management plan you want to develop you require a medium resolution 30 meters or 20 meter resolution for that a list type of type of sensors it is very useful and with very high resolution for carsa type of image satellites will provide a very high resolution to study localized inundation that means today you have got from data sets space data sets addressing global needs to local situations and apart from this space data sets you can derive digital elevation models which will be of immense value for forecasting this is the entire india and the neighboring countries the um, digital elevation model 30 meters posting as well as 10 meter posting which are available some of the things the tiles are available in Bhuvan. You can download DEM directly from Bhuvan site. You need not go anywhere and everything. And based on this, what you can generate from space data sets is 3D mapping. We can do 3D mapping using high resolution satellite images, LRS, DEM, and everything, which can be much visualization. These space data sets can be used for various type of databases, which is an immense value for modeling purpose which will be of very immense value. The land use, land cover, 12 cycles from 2004 to 2016, information is available on Bhuvan. And also 250K, that is one is to the crop, a tariff crop area. If you want to know the crop damage due to the floods, you require a crop information, which you can intersect with the flood inundation information to generate what is the crop area that has been damaged. Land use, land cover information is very important, especially when you are making vulnerability analysis for generation of risk assessment purposes and everything. And uh, land degradation aspects. And uh, there is a lot of databases. I don't want to spend uh, time on this because it takes a uh, uh, lot of things I need to finish. Agricultural uh, forecast is uh, being done, agriculture information, which is useful, especially for this thing. Drinking water mission for purse, groundwater prospects maps, the information is generated from space data sets is available. And uh, land use, geomorphology, wasteland, land degradation, snow and uh, visitation areas, all these databases are available, which will be of useful for modeling as well as for damage assessment or for risk assessment, for flood risk assessment and everything. Snow and glacier is very important, especially in the Brahmaputra and everything due to rainfall, especially in genom floods are going to be the heavy snowfall and occurs and the snowman comes, they are going to be a floods, especially in the northern part of this country and Jammu and Kashmir and everything. Urban information is very important to address the urban floods and everything, especially for the ocean the related or weather and climate related purposes, a lot of generated uh, information is generated, which is available in NICES portal. That is also available. You can go to NRSA website. You can access to NICES portal. A lot of information has been published and everything. Essential climate variables or ocean state, ocean temperature, ocean uh, heat wave predictions and other things and everything. And uh, apart from this, you got one is to 10,000 scale databases are generated using under SISDIP Bhuvan Panchai. When you want to address urban floods, this database of very immense useful satellite imagery of 2.5 resolution Cartosat images is available, which is linked to drainage slope, cadastral data sets and everything. And it is linked to the census, population, literacy rates, housing conditions and other things and everything. There is a lot of capacity building is giving, ISRO is giving capacity building all these portals to various institutions and everything. And uh, there is a asset which has been generated. And uh, these are the things I don't want to go into details. Asset mapping which have been given more than 270 type of assets, primary schools, secondary schools temple and everything. When you want to know uh, a flood has occurred, what are the facilities that have been subjected to floods for this type of valuable database will be of immense use. 
huge amount of databases already available. Please kindly utilize it. Whatever I have told, I just I want to show you some of the examples. As I told you, once you know the DEM, you can translate the flood inundation information again into a spatial domain. Because when you want to disseminate the information understandable to a common man, you must will translate it into a way with respect to a physical boundary, up to what extent it will come, Mario on the stick, up to this building is going to come, yes, DMA in, is going to be inundated, or the Shillong, Omayum, is going to be, an Isak is going to be, like that you must be able to get a physical landmark. For that, what you can do, generate is using DEM, the flood inundation information has been generated. This is part of Godari River Basin, which I am showing, which you are showing on Sabari River, the spatial inundation. And once you get a high resolution DM is also available, which is being generated from the radar and everything, you know that inundation, which will be very immense useful for damage assessment and everything. Whatever the road, railway track, settlements that are being affected, such type of things which you can do it. In. And you can generate scenarios for given water level or given sea level. What are the areas that are going to be inundated with respect to the flood once you know the DEM? So that for the given level, you can take evacuation measures to save the people to their life side. And apart from this, you must be able to satellite data planning is very important to capture the flood situations in the country. Whenever you want to know uh, activity has been given heavy rainfall event has been sounded in a particular district or something like that, you must know those information to capture, to program the satellite, not only Indian satellites, for foreign satellites also you can program. You can ask them to provide the satellites, uh, satellite data of that, that part over that affected area and everything, especially TRM and Jeff image, IMD gives, wherever the likely rainfall, 7-day forecast, 3-day forecast, 24 hours forecast. This information, once you program the satellite, you can see this is the Brahmaputra uh, River, sometime I think it is in 1993 or 94 away, 2004, the flood inundations which are taken place in Brahmaputra, the water level rise in this, you can see what is the inundation that has happened in the Marigon district. So whatever you're seeing, the dark is a sorry image. What you are seeing is the dark is the inundation and everything. And flood the recession as well as progression. And you get at every two days, July 20, June 20th, July 6th, 13th, July 20th, July, at a two days or three days interval, you are able to know what is the inundation patterns that is at happened place and everything. By that, you can generate a type of picture. Using a image, you can generate a state level flood inundation information. And similarly, using a high resolution data sets, you can take distant inundation information. Using the high resolution satellite images, you can make a very detailed information at a sub district level information mm -hmm. and if you got a dm you can get flood depth maps you can be generated and you know the cumulative flood progression and decision and the flood persistence maps using multiple images you can find out how much air how much duration the area is under flooding which you can do it and everything and this is an example to capture the information this is of uh, Maharashtra, which there is a lot of inundation has taken place in the July, about more than 250% of excessive rainfall occurred. These are the images that have been captured. These are prior to the event and these July 2021, whatever blue is seeing water and everything. Even if you are not having any satellite images, because you are all from the academic institutions, using the rainfall information as well as a DEM, you can find out what are the areas are likely to be affected using hand model. Uh, height about here, drainage is a model open source, which is available on the internet and everything. Based on these things, what you can do, this is actually, especially in 2016, we have heavy rainfall occurred in uh, uh, and what you are given is what are the likely areas are going to be inundated, which are shown in the red, and what are the CN likely to be affected if more rainfall is going to be act, uh, affected. I can say two zones, zone one and zone two, and we generated a KML and put it on a apartments map, a city map on uh, this inundation information, and given a Google navigation to the police and uh, relief team people, patrolling people, so that they can go and alert the apartment people so that they can, the, when the event, if the heavy rainfall is going to occur, what is likely to uh, come onto their apartments and everything. Such type of information has been generated. 
And uh, using this type of inundation information, what we can do is generate hazard zonation maps. This is uh, for Assam, hazard zonation maps have been generated. This is in consultation with the NDMA as well as government of Assam. It is verified by government of Assam. And uh, based on these things, uh, uh, risk assessment also has been made using some of the vulnerability parameters, hazard zonation, population, uh, land use, as well as infrastructure information. Risk assessment maps also have been generated. And whatever the information has been given to Assam ASDMA, Assam Disaster Management Authority, they made a customized booklets of each district and given to the district administration so that they can implement necessary measures in their respective districts. This is dissemination of the information further downstream. We are given state level, they further uh, interest, uh, interest have taken to disseminate further down. This is another example of blockade of uh, rivers the streams due to the artificial blockade of uh, streams and everything sometime in 2004 there is a Pacho lake in a certain basin which was blocked uh, due to the landslide has been uh, caused uh, blockade of river stream in a Pacho and started building up and everything and almost daily basis this is being monitored because it's on the other side of the territory and uh, whatever the Progression, whatever the building up of taken continuously, daily, there is a cabinet meeting the reviewed the cabinet and MHA reviewed these things, taken necessary measures downstream of the things in the event of breach of this landslide dam or the blockade. If it breaches, there should not be any impact and loss of life. The communication systems as well as other systems are in kept in place so that the damages can be minimized and everything. This is the recent uh, slide, uh, Lahul Spiti uh, slides, which has blocked the river. How it looks on satellite image. This is the blockade which has taken place and everything. This is the impoundment what you are seeing on the Chandrabhaga River, which I mean, the space data sets which shows the impoundment due to the landslide dams and everything. This is another structural information. There is a breach of, uh, occurred in the 2018 Kosi River. There is a huge inundation near Berpur. Uh, in the near barrage, there is a lot of uh, inundation has taken place in government of Bihar. The high resolution satellite images, this is the uh, breach portion that has taken place. And one subsequently when it is restored, that is monitoring of structural flood control works is possible using with uh, satellite images. And uh, to avoid this type of situations, what you have to study is uh, the historical satellite uh, the river configuration using satellite images is very important. How the satellite river configuration in 2003, 2006 and 2008 as well as in 2000 uh, uh, April before the event and after the event, the river configuration has been studied where the river start hugging embankments and everything during 2008 uh, April and subsequently in October the embankment has got breached. The post flood river configuration is plays a very important role to assess the vulnerability of the flood control works, especially embankment transfers in the river. And this is a, a map generated out of that, obviously, the river configuration before embankment and the inundation, which is after the embankment, which has been. And multiple satellite images, multiple temporal satellite data used for assessing the Erosion. This is a Brahmaputra erosion 1996 to 2002. Entire Brahmaputra bank erosion has been done for Central Water Commission, which has been given to state government, maybe also having this and bank erosion, everything. I do not want to go for a satellite inundation caused due to the cyclones and everything. And one important information which I want to tell you is the Bhuvan, ISRO Bhuvan, which has got a lot of information is available on Bhuvan store and uh, we can visualize we can lot of high resolution data you can visualize it as on the platform you can create your own uh, Bhuvan customize the application to your needs and everything you can map online mapping and download a GS type of layer for your analysis you can integrate your own layer into the data set which is available on Bhuvan for assessment purpose or for analysis for modeling purposes. Suppose it is not available on Bhuvan, you can add your data layer and everything. And for different states, a lot of portals have been generated for each state, some of the states which you can visualize it. 
some of the data is open some of the data is not open and everything and the phone store and especially disaster persons they are posting a lot of information immediately after the event what are the satellite data pictures what are the historic satellite data pictures historic inundation pictures hazard resolution pictures all these informations have been posted on bhuvan please kindly go to the isro bhuvan site to download and everything the information which has been given you from the site as well as from ndm i didn't speak about it because the time is very short and everything a thank you for giving an opportunity the organizers the nadm as well as the northeastern hill university and my acknowledgement to my colleagues in rsa who have contributed a lot along with me when i was in service for hours the space technology for disaster management some of the information which has been generated i shared with you if any questions are there please kindly ask me now so that i will after this session i got some other engagement over to you thank you thank you sir thank you sir, thank you, sir for your sharing of vast knowledge about uh, about the flood the urban flood the flash flood and about the crop damage even about how is the the flood control and the management even you have also discussed about the satellite and the uh, satellite data means for the various uh, using of this data like uh, like the blue one from the blue one and also you have also about the discussion about the multi uh, from this satellite data we can generate like the multi satellite image means for for the use of a different purpose thank you sir thank you very much dr dipali you please see if any question yes sir uh, any question is there that you can uh, from the participant side yes sir so far no participant has, none of the participant has raised any queries or questions if engaged they raise uh, any we will ask or forward sir forward to sir thank you very much sir right okay, now sir. thank no you question. thank you very much if at all anything will come i'll let okay. you know sir right sir. okay thank you very much thank you all the participants on the panelists thank you okay nice sir Mr. Lampang, please go ahead for the second program. Okay. Now I would like to call uh, uh, Arjun Rai sir uh, for the topic like the seismic micro zone using the geospatial and technique and and a case study. Uh, his uh, achievement. Uh, actually, he worked in a geological survey of India and in northern region of Lucknow. And his qualification MSc applied geology from Dubrugar uh, University. He Mr. Lamkar, just one second, please, in for the interruption. Please call upon Dr. Arjun that he is there or not. Pardon, sir. Uh, please call upon Mr. Arjun Rai. He is there or not? Mr. Arjun, you are there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am here. Okay, please join. Okay. Okay, okay, yes, I could see. Okay, thank you, thank you, please. Please carry on, Mr. Dr. Lamprong, please carry on. Okay, sir, okay. And he completed the uh, complete, uh, following project like the uh, seismic uh, micro zone study in the uh, Srinagar city, Jammu and Kashmir, and a project like a seismic micro zone uh, zones, uh, zonization study of the Meerut city in the Uttar Pradesh, and a project like the micro earthquake study to identify uh, the constituting source of the seismic activity, uh, activity and evaluation of earthquake hazard uh, potential in the Keshwa area of Jammu and Kashmir, and a project like the uh, recognition. Uh, survey of further PGE mineralization in the Gewahar, Gira, Pahar area like the Lalipur district of UP of Uttar Pradesh and another like the recognition survey for the gemstone, Sapir Robbie 
and are in at the west of the Maijal area of the Kishwar district, Jammu and Kashmir, on the expedition basis. And uh, like the study of the activity uh, tector, tectonic along the selection segment of the Himalaya front truss, HFT, and the main boundary truss, NBT, and the main central truss, MCT, and associated with the following part of the Himachal and Himalaya using the MEA and the DGPS observation. His lecture to bring uh, the uh, delivered like, uh, lecture in the e-training on the earthquake geology, active fall mapping, and the seismotectonic study in the geological survey of India Regional Training Division of the North, Northern Region of the Lucknow. Sir, over to you, sir. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Uh, today I'm going to give a lecture on uh, microgenation and using geophysical uh, techniques and, and we will discuss uh, uh, two case issues. So is micro when you say seismic microgenation uh, uh, it uh, occurs in three phases. The estimations of the seismic hazard and donations, uh, the vulnerability assessment and Disaster mitigation, disaster management, and planning and development. And to carry out uh, 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 all these three phases, uh, we need a base map and we need a geological information, we need a geological information, and we have to fix the component. And geological information, we need geological and geomorphological maps, seismotectonic setup of an area, the land use, uh, land cover, and demographic data, groundwater data, and land hard, landslide hazard donation maps. In geophysical information, uh, in the form of bedrock, bedrock conservation maps, uh, gravity and magnetic maps, site response, seismic site response values, a shear wave velocity up to the depth of uh, 30 meters. And the geotechnical components that we calculate the n value shear wave velocities and uh, data by the simulation of ground motion and probabilistic uh, hazard maps and mapping of the liquefaction potential. When we say earthquake, uh, then it's directly come into our mind that uh, because of some kind of seismic, uh, because of some seismic uh, waves, it creates an uh, earthquake. When we say seismic waves, uh, there are many two types of things, the body waves and the surface waves. Uh, Body waves are of two types. The P waves, in which the particle motion parallel to the direction of propagation, and in S waves, the particle motion perpendicular to the direction of propagation. And uh, and in case of surface waves, which travels near to the surface of the earth, are of two types: that are reeling waves and the love waves. Uh, here, in, uh, a wave form of an earthquake record. And the first arrival is the P waves, and the second is the uh, shear waves. Then comes the surface waves, and in the later form, the dispersion will occur. And because of uh, surface waves uh, stays for a longer period of time in the ground, uh, the ground roll is produced. When you say uh, micro tremor, micro tremor of uh, that short period and the long period. Short periods uh, are of a very high frequency uh, and produced by the traffic and or any kind of traffic noises. And the long period are uh, are are uh, long periods are, are uh, micro tremors are come from the very distant source and uh, whose uh, um, origin is unknown. So one of the most important. Uh, Study is the uh, study of the in any kind of earthquake is the study of the surface waves because it causes a uh, destruction and the earthquake energy that travel near or along uh, along the surface of the earth and its energy decreases with depth. There are two types of already discussed: wind waves and love waves, and uh, it is characterized with a very low velocity, low frequency, and high amplitude. And uh, in the field. Uh, while doing the survey, we can generate this uh, surface wave. 
and we can record and we can analyze to know the ground condition of the area and it's in any kind of uh, waveform it cover almost 80 percent of the energy and it is very easier to generate and it is very easier to record its uh, velocity is lower than the p wave but its uh, velocity structure is uh, similar to the s wave therefore uh, the, by um, analyzing the uh, surface wave we can uh, uh, know about the we can know the uh, velocity structure of the shear uh, wave therefore the importance of the uh, the importance of study of surface wave is very much we can use the uh, two types of the uh, array the uh, here phase, uh, two types of method the passive source method and the active source method and the passive source method is uh, nothing but we record the ambient vibrations coming from the distant sources and uh, and we generate a 30 second record files oh. and then <clears throat> and the, the basic noise coming from the distant sources are of very uh, lower frequency and a high length high wavelength so uh, using a high wavelength uh, uh, high wavelength energy source so we can map up to a great depth. We can use a uh, different type of array uh, in a uh, micro tremor array uh, measurement. Uh, the uh, isotope is a 2D array, a 2D array where uh, we can uh, our, uh, place our geophone in equ uh, equitangle shape. And we can uh, also uh, uh, set up the survey in the L shape manner. The different type of LC arrangements are used, like uh, um, seven geophones in one, along one uh, along one direction, uh, three geophones and, and perpendicular di direction, three geophones in the in the center. Uh, one geophone is used so that uh, the entire uh, to get that and uh, two clear two D picture of an area. <coughs> now the, um, the array size is very much important. Uh, uh, it must be the one kind of the depth of inter interest or uh, 1.5 times is recommended. Uh, suppose we are interested uh, in a depth of 60 meter, then at least uh, we have 1.5 times of the uh, depth of interest of uh, the area side must be the 1.5 times of the depth of interest. Uh, we can use uh, the, the vertical geophone of 4.5 hertz and uh, source is the ambient micrometer, uh, the uh, very distant source, and uh, coming from the different directions. And, uh, and uh, we uh, do not need a uh, uh, trigger system here. The software will automatically trigger the trigger and will record uh, the passive wave. The record length uh, have to keep it up 32 seconds, and for at least 20 records are uh, necessary to generate a clear picture. This is the uh, waveform uh, generated from the passive recordings and you can see that in every uh, every waveforms are similar to each other and in some uh, in some uh, waveforms and the spikes are noted uh, and it is because of uh, some uh, vehicle movement near to the geophone and this uh, must be avoided while doing survey and uh, in or uh, Active uh, multi channel analysis, uh, multi channel analysis of surface wave uh, 1D. Uh, we, are, uh, we are using uh, uh, our source where we uh, come on the ground uh, and then we create the system wave and then we record the <coughs> by uh, we. Uh, Seismic energy and then it's recorded in the uh, geophone. The, in uh, one DM uh, macro survey, we generally record the, uh, the, uh, the low or lower length high frequency component, and it is uh, using this, uh, we can uh, easily map the uh, near surface, uh, near surface uh, structure. Uh, here also we can use the linear uh, uh, array and the linear uh, active uh, method as the uh, wavelength uh, recorded is uh, less. Uh, so uh, 
the desktop images uh, uh, the the array size we must be greater than and the depth of interest must be at least two to three times uh, we can use the geofon interval of two to three meters and the minimum geofon is uh, 12 or 16 or 24 we can use and the geofon type is 4.5 hertz vertical geofon and uh, and for the short locations uh, uh, the uh, short location must be located at least uh, 10 to uh, 20 percent of the speed length at an offset of 10 to 20 percent on one end and uh, source equipment is a slash hammer 5 kilo to 10 kilo um, and here in uh, the hammer seat is uh, uh, attached with the hammer handle and it's connected to the seismographic uh, seismograph trigger port sample interval is 0.5 to 1 millisecond and record length of 1 to 2 seconds is enough to include the surface wave and next comes the 2D Maswa survey. Uh, in 2D Maswa survey, the, uh, the numerous faults are taken uh, at the increment locations. Uh, geophone uh, uh, speed may be fixed or may not be fixed, uh, depend upon the uh, survey uh, length area. Uh, we use the three arrangement here the fixed uh, receiver arrangement, continuous fixed receiver arrangement. In fixed receiver arrangement, uh, uh, the, all the geophones are fixed, and then the, uh, the first sort is made on uh, at one half of the geophone interval, and then we uh, increase through the survey line uh, through the survey line. In the in uh, the second uh, in such a way that the second sorts are made, all the sorts are made in between the uh, geophone, and the last sorts are made again at uh, the one half of the geophone interval. In the continuous fix uh, speed, uh, uh, speed uh, receiver speed arrangement, uh, the, uh, the sorts are made, uh, and the uh, one half of the geophone speed uh, that is, if we are using 24, there are two years after completion of the two years sorts, the one half of the speed that is the uh, speed A1, sub speed A1, is shifted. Uh, and forms a, a survey speed B1. Uh, so, uh, this uh, continuous uh, fixed speed survey arrangements are used uh, when the survey area uh, is a uh, uh, very long and then uh, survey length is very long and the uh, survey is not confined in one uh, one place. To cover the uh, very uh, long uh, survey distance, uh, we can use the continuous fixed uh, receiver speed. In case of roll along and on uh, speed, and the uh, the shorts and uh, receivers are uh, advanced both the shorts uh, and receiver uh, are advanced in the upline direction to go by the survey distance these two methods the roll along and on speed and continuous fixed speed uh, arrangement are used when we have to cover the very large survey distance so we can use the linear uh, speed configurations here the speed length is about equal to the two times the depth of interest. The geophone interval uh, you can keep uh, 1.5 to 5 meters, and the number of geophones a uh, minimum at least a uh, single geophone, a maximum uh, depend on the uh, survey length. Here also, here uh, 4.5 hard geophotical geophone we can use. Now uh, it comes to the uh, uh, velocity model. When we say uh, uh, surface width, surface width uh, depends on the material properties. Uh, with variations in the layer stiffness and depth, railing waves travel at a single velocity on distance time uh, time distance or before railing waves have one slope. Lower uh, velocity surface have a steep slope, and higher velocity surface have a flatter slope. In case of heterogeneous model. With variation in the layer stiffness, uh, reading waves travel with a different frequency and travel with a, uh, a different velocity. The, uh, some waves are recorded earlier and some are in later. So it creates a strain or a wedge or fan shape, which is a characteristic of the reeling waves. The, record, uh, the waves recorded uh, first are the low frequency and high velocity, and the later phase are high, high frequency and low velocity. The, uh, high, uh, the high velocity uh, 
and the low velocity uh, surface waves are combined and form a dispersion curve and is floated against the frequency. The micro camera array uh, measurements uh, are used to uh, the variations of the uh, uh, so, uh, resolve the greater depth and uh, used to, to know the variations with depth. Uh, the MASWA resolves the cellular depth because it uses the uh, low wavelength and, um, and in MAM uh, we use the longer wavelength coming from the distant sources. The combining uh, both the MASWA and uh, MAM results uh, uh, allows the highest resolution estimations of the S wave velocity and it creates a 1D shear wave velocity, 1D profile shear wave velocity. The, uh, the 1D uh, micro tremor array measurement and the 2D dispersion curves uh, can be combined and to, uh, can be combined and creates a 2D velocity model. And uh, in active source, uh, the wavelength record is a 1 to 50 meters and the target frequencies are 5 to 50 hertz and uh, and we can use the uh, active source analysis uh, results are can be used for technical cycle applications, uh, foundation engineering, uh, void detections, stratigraphy, and methodological studies. And as the passive source using and the long wavelength coming from the distant source, the uh, can be used to for to know the deeper uh, geological to get uh, deeper geological information. So can deeper geological information. Here is an uh, uh, 2D profile uh, seismic uh, shear wave velocity profiles obtained from the Marshall method. Here we can see just the, the the depth of the soft sediment over the engineering bedrock. And here we can see the depth of uh, bedrocks as the surface undulates and deep into the right. The ambient noise study can also be uh, used because it can be performed. Uh, it's very easy to use and it's for, I think analysis are uh, simple and its execution cost is uh, very low. And, and the noise can be of distance origin or total origin. Here we can uh, use the uh, uh, S by V spectral analysis. The S by V ratio is uh, generally related to electricity of the reading wave because of the predominancy of the reading wave and vertical component. Noise is made of both the surface wave as well as the body wave, and hence the contribution of both is incorporated in the analysis. We can use the both the short period seismograph uh, and the long period or broadband seismograph. Data equation is very two hours, three minutes to two hours, and then we use the software GFT. The electrical method uh, can also be used uh, to know the lateral variation in the resistivity and to know the lateral variation in the resistivity, the profile, the profile, the resistivity profile is done and, and to know the uh, depth of the sediment at some specific locations or to know the gradient or the slope of the bedrock, we can use, conduct the resistivity counting. So the two types of arrangements are used, binary arrangements are used. Uh, to, uh, for profiling to know the lithological variations along the survey line and the slum buzzers are arrangements are used uh, for determining the uh, thickness, sediment thickness and to know the uh, bed, uh, bedrock topography. Uh, here I am uh, sharing and the, uh, <coughs> the system, uh, result of the system micronization we have conducted in the uh, Merritt City. Merritt City is uh, one of the popular cities in the NCR region. Uh, so, the geophysical uh, geo, uh, microgenation uh, survey was taken up to uh, determine the predominant frequency site amplifications from the site response study and the average shear wave velocity from MASA method and to delineate the thickness we have used the particle electrical sounding. For noise survey, we have used the Alters K2 kinematic instrument and vertical electrical sounding we have applied pixel per IH unit and for the 24 uh, MASWA method we have used the stratovisor MDH XP 24 channel photograph. Here is the field photo photograph. The first is the noise uh, uh, recording of the noise and the second one is the 
the receptivity sounding and third is the, the Marshall method the geological map of the uh, Merit uh, city the Merit city is concentrated in the quaternary sediment and this quaternary sediment are represented by the older alluvium and the newer alluvium in the Varanasi alluvium is the older alluvium and newer alluvium is represented by the older sediment uh, we have covered an area of 300 square kilometers, uh, taking a 3.1 noise station. Maswa is conducted at 56 sites, covering an area of 300 kilometers. And the sounding has been conducted at 100 sites, including the different methodologies in the area. From the site response study, uh, uh, we have obtained the number of SYV curves. The first one is the star uh, showing the sharp peak, showing the uh, star uh, showing sharp peak and uh, having a uh, good amplitude contrast. And the second is uh, uh, second peak is a uh, little bit better than the first one, and it uh, it could it, it, uh, these peaks are produced because of amplitude contrast between the uh, underlying and the overlying points. And the third uh, one is uh, it is uh, in the lower side, lower frequency side, and it's uh, and this, this, uh, in this side the uh, uh, sediment thickness is very high. In the in the fourth uh, as well curve, we have uh, two peaks, and that means uh, this side has a two uh, uh, the two. Uh, uh, and this means uh, these two sides that the that the different layer uh, have different amplitude contrast and it's uh, occurs at the two different level. This is the pigment frequency map of the uh, uh, Merit City. In this uh, Merit City, the higher values and the lower values are observed, and the higher values and lower values reflect the variations of sediment, and the low values are uh, mainly observed in. Uh, Pathan uh, Pura area and uh, Pauli Khat and Gesu Pur are a battalion. Uh, in these regions, uh, the soil uh, <coughs> and the, the uh, sediment thickness is uh, much higher as compared to the other part of the soil area. And, uh, and the seismic waves are likely to get amplified uh, in this area because of the presence of soft sediment. This is the peak uh, amplification map of the major city. Uh, the peak amplification map uh, here, uh, most of the areas are, uh, are having a uh, low peak amplification, except two sites like uh, Haroli, Ari, and Patelians. And these uh, sites are, like, uh, are likely to get experienced with the likely to get experienced or uh, 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 are more prone to amplify in these sites. This is the volumetry map of the Merit city, and the volumetry map uh, shows the higher high volumetry on uh, in the uh, south of the Pohali. Uh, when we say uh, uh, sites uh, classifications, uh, uh, generally we use the uh, 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 geological information, uh, uh, geomorphological information, and then. Uh, uh, geophysical information. Uh, one of the most important uh, type classifications uh, given by the National Hard to Edit Reduction Program is uh, uh, here the soils are classified uh, into different types A, B, C, D, depending on the uh, uh, average shear wave and the axial wave depth of uh, 30 meters. The site class A corresponds to a uh, shear wave velocity greater than. Uh, the B class, the shear wave velocity uh, varies between 760 to 1500, and in C, 360 to 760, and in D, uh, it is a steep soil class type uh, where the velocity ranges between 182 to 60. And the class E is a very soft soil where the velocity is less than or equal to 180, degrees, so 180 uh, meter per second. This is the average shear wave velocity map uh, prepared from the 
prepare from uh, <coughs> Moscow data. And uh, here's the here the intensity uh, ranges from the 240 to 355, so it's going to be total variation of the system area the closer the closer of very lower scale wave capacity around the and in uh, public cars and public food area uh, the closer of the uh, is towards scale wave capacity are observed and the all sites the all study sites have become to uh, the high class C as per the NEHRP standard the of some sites uh, here uh, in one site data and uh, and the available borehole data we have 
classified the different uh, deposition layer on the basis of resistivity and it shows that the clave resistivities range in the form of or in, in the range of 5 to 15 or 10 meter and thin clave in the range of 16 to 60 meter 60 ohm meter and, and saturated fan in the range of 30 to 70 ohm meter and the uh, dry fan in the range of 120 ohm meter and the medium fan dry fan in the range of 120 to 300 ohm meter and medium fan with shrunker in the range of 300 to 300 ohm meter and coarse fan mixed with shrunker in the range of greater than uh, in the range of greater than 700 ohm meter these are the resistivity curves from the two types uh, we have cut in 23 and 24 in the first uh, 23 type uh, uh, the resistivity at the depth of uh, in the <coughs> in the four layer is showing uh, thickness of 23.3 and we have encountered in a saturated water zone here and in in the uh, we have 24 type uh, at the depth of almost uh, 30, 30, uh, 33 point, uh, 33 meters at the resistivity um, showing a resistivity of 51.4 ohm meters and we have encountered uh, at the four layer in the four layer that the saturated zone water zone is encountered here in the VS16 and VS18 also uh, forming types uh, we have encountered saturated water zone at different uh, depth level. Uh, the saturation of uh, water table map in uh, any kind of group microfinition study is very important as uh, the presence of water level, uh, water level near to the uh, near to the surface, uh, uh, like near to the surface. Uh, uh, the surface creates an impossible. Uh, uh, and uh, the study of uh, water table map is uh, very important. In the uh, water table control map, prepared uh, from the resistivity data, we show the uh, variation in uh, water table from 2 to 38 meters below ground level. The, the water table, uh, in this water table, map, the public has when public food area or in the Modipuram area in the northern side of the study area uh, and the uh, north eastern side of the area like lower part or Tony, it shows the uh, water table at a very shallow depth and this uh, the area where the water table is at a very shallow depth are uh, uh, more prone to electrification during in our case. So, on the basis of uh, uh, three studies, uh, uh, high platform studies, uh, activities, and the macro studies, we have come to note that uh, the magnetic city, in the magnetic city frequency ranges from 0.6129.33 Hz. Uh, the variation in the uh, right variation in the frequency uh, ranges with the variation in the region thickness and the, uh, the lighter in uh, the very low variation in the thickness that the the soil type, soil class type is of, it's very similar, similar in different uh, in, in, in the whole study area. <clears throat> the wide range, uh, range in the variation of resistivity is due to presence of the sand, the presence of bunker, the British water, uh, the sewage, and the dry sand. From the groundwater table, we have also found it, uh, the uh, groundwater table. Uh, that the, in the study area, mirror area, the active groundwater table uh, is from 2.4 meters below ground level. The, on the average here, we have to see the size within the mirror city and ranges from 238.5 meters per second, but the totally 235.8 in the Panwari area. The total variations uh, here we have to see down from 6 to 30. And all the size uh, falls in the uh, high class G, the steep soil types. The interface between the soft soil and the underlying steep soils occur in the range of 12.5 to 20 meters. 
this is all about the uh, geophysical method we have uh, used in the Meret city. Another uh, uh, case uh, is there, and uh, the, uh, the gravity magnetic method uh, used in the year 2002 in the northern bank of the Brahmaputra River. And, uh, Using gravity and magnetic data, uh, some lineaments uh, were demarcated or identified. In. And the Google gravity map, uh, the first one is the BG map, Google gravity map, it shows the variation of minus 37 milligrams in the eastern part near March to 47 uh, 49 milligrams in the Singuri in the western part of the area. The area around Singuri. Uh, uh, here uh, so the, the low gravity value is dipping and in the on uh, either flank uh, the high gravity value is there. Uh, this is the basinal features here, the presence of basinal features and on the either side uh, and the <coughs> and the uplifted structure because of uplifted structure or uh, presence of uh, basinal is a lower depth. And the high is here. The one of the most important, uh, important result that comes out from the gravity data is the, uh, the, is the east west trending of the controls along the uh, Nitkan Muk and the Lavari locality and further south up to the river bank. The highest gradient, highest gradient uh, suggests the presence of down men in the bedrock or fall like features. Here you can see the, the the presence of the gradient in the, the presence of the gradient in the gravity anomaly and this kind of gradient suggests the uh, fault like features fault like features and this uh, east west uh, 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 become a northeast and southwest here this is the extension of the Section of the fault like feature in this direction. And the magnetic uh, from the magnetic anomaly has uh, shown the variation from the magnetic start near March down southeastern part of the area to 100 km square near in the village west of March down. And from this uh, gravity and magnetic map, uh, we can uh, decipher the uh, topography of the bedrock. Or uh, basement, or, or we can know the general structure of the area. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your sharing your knowledge, sir. <coughs> Okay. Can you please see if any question is there? Yes, sir. I'm checking. So no question. No, no question is there in the chat box or Q and A box. Now, Mr. Arjun, I am having one question with you. Okay, sir. That, uh, especially you have done that uh, the seismic and parallel resistivity in your case study yes. in Mirror City. Yes. That's so. Okay. Uh, that specially I'll ask for the resistivity only. The resistivity in Mirror City, you got five layer, five or seven layer mix Hello? sand. And could you hear me? Yes, sir. tell me, sir. Hello. Tell me, sir. So that you have got seven layers, specially clay, sand, sand medium ores with conquer like this, seven layers are there. And okay. somewhere you got the resistivity more than 700 ohm meter. And yes, sir. vis is you have shown that water table also okay yes, sir. now the liquefaction will take place in which place which is saturated with water and clay and the sand in the same uh, intensity the liquefaction, liquefaction will take place sir uh, liquefaction when you talk about the liquefaction it uh, depends on the saturation no, sir? saturation yes. uh, saturation either in the clay or in the sand wherever you get the saturation there is a chances of liquefaction sir. 
So the saturation of water should be there. If it is no yes. water, dry, so the no I mean, less, I mean, probably it is there. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. somewhere you shown in the gravity in Bogar anomaly map, there is oh, one okay. fault in between uh, in Mirat city in some topograph in Topo city have shown in the Bogar uh, anomaly map, gravity sir, map. The Bogar anomaly is mapped from the Guwahati region. Sir. Yes, Guwahati. Very good. Very good. In the Haley Hubson, that is correct. Very good. So, in that map, in between east and west trend, that okay. one fault you have started to show. Okay, so, yeah. that is uh, within the basement, and you have interpreted or it is also established that fault in that trend is in between east to west. Actually, it is an interpreted fault, sir, based on the gravity data. Okay. So, that depth, probable depth, any idea about that? You are not audible, sir. Ah, sir, no? the depth, depth of the fault from the surface. Okay, sir. The depth of the fault was not measured, sir. Okay, good. So, uh, Mr. Arjun, you are going, you are doing very nice work in geophysical prospecting. I could appreciate. Yes, so, uh, you should show some more case study also, especially in other area. We will call you afterwards also. So, please show some more case study. And conclusion also from your side that what is your inferences, evidence, and all the things. Nice thing. Of course, in seismic also, you've talked a lot regarding the 1D, 2D, uh, MSW, and the soil we, uh, along with the soil uh, map also. Very nicely. Nowadays, uh, nowadays, this MAFA method is very popular, sir. Yes. Uh, in the cities also, they are conducting to, uh, to, uh, uh, to locate the void region and to and for in geology also they are uh, doing this uh, mass work uh, to know the soil properties uh, and to uh, to classify the sand type also but good good quite good work so it is very applicable applicable especially the immense application in engineering geology and engineering geophysics sir. yes that in micro seismic zonation you have tried to establish and you have done in this mirat also and we'll expect mm. some more case study, especially in micro uh, seismic zonation in future. Okay, thank okay. you, Mr. Arjun. Thank Very you. good work, encouraging work you are doing on. So please carry on. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Lamprang, you please uh, pass on the stage to you. Now I would like to call on Ms. Dipali Jendala, a junior uh, consultant of NIDN. Uh, a topic uh, means uh, topic means the role of the post disaster uh, recognition data and uh, document in enhance the last slide studies uh, above uh, uh, achievement. Achieve his master degree from uh, IIT Rocky. Worship a doctorate uh, scholar from Indian Institute of Technology, Delhi, and currently working as a junior consultant in NIDM. She is working on the project of the uh, uh, archival report and documentation of the social economic uh, significant landslide in India. Now I would like to uh, uh, over to you, uh, Madam. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Let me share my screen. So please confirm my screen is visible or not. Yes. Thank you. So, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, myself, Dipali Chandran. Today, I will be delivering the lecture on uh, role of post-disaster reconnaissance data and documentation and enhancing landscape studies. So when we talk about landslides, uh, we have come across many times the definition of the landslides. So I'm giving just a brief of the uh, what do we actually understand by the landslides. Uh, 
a landslide is a movement of a mass rock, earth, or debris down a slope. So these landslides usually lead to many effects, like uh, these affect the human lives, livelihood, environment, livestock. These are the few examples on your screen you can see as Kerala Iduki district's uh, landslide, which occurred on August 16, 2020. And another landslide which recently occurred in the month of July in 2021, that was the Kindal landslide. I hope everyone might have seen the video of this landslide also when this bridge got collapsed, when the rolling boulders uh, dropped, down the, oh, dropped down over the bridge. Another one is the debris flow in the Kotha Mangal June 3, 2020 image. And uh, the right side of the slide, you can see the image of the livestock and the people there walking past a road damaged, the road got damaged due to the heavy rainfall in Kodaku on August 18, 2020. So whenever a landslide happens, it usually affects the number of the people, number of the livestock, infrastructure, environment in many ways. So when we talk about the landslides, uh, we have also come across the different types of the landslides. Many times uh, in newspapers or in the research paper, uh, the authors used to mention that uh, the type of the landslide was a fall, topple, rotational landslide. So usually whenever we define the landslide, we describe in terms of a particular terminology. So these terminologies can be either fall or topple, rotational slide, transitional slide, spreads of flow, mud slides. So when mud slides like when the water is along with the water, the debris is flowing, the mud slide is happening. And also we define the landslide in terms of the uh, velocity of the occurrence of the landslide. So as per so many authors have worked out. So finally, we have the seven categories in which the landslide velocities are being characterized. The one is the extremely rapid. Next is very rapid, and uh, third is the rapid. Fourth is moderate. Another is slow. Then very slow and extremely slow. So according to this, we used to classify the landslide movement, and according to the displacement rate or the velocity, we define the landslides. Just a second. Uh, that's a mute. Sorry. So um, another figure you can see that it's a generalized phase of the landslide activity. Uh, the landslide activity, this is being comprised of the pre-failure management of the landslide and the post-failure management of the landslides. Whenever the pre-failure is happening, usually we prevent, we try to uh, make some method, methodology, uh, we try to adopt some measures to prevent ourselves. But usually the landslides are, uh, usually landslides hit by with no warning. So we don't have any warning for the landslides. It can happen anytime. But still, based on the past studies, past patterns of the landslides, we used to uh, make the measures or define the measures to prevent those or to mitigate the people residing over that particular place to oh, generate the response and relief facilities that advance if possible, depending upon the pattern studies only. Similarly, when the failure happens, we go for the response. And then the post failure leads to the crisis. Then again, we have to study whether the landslide which happened in the past is going to be reactivated or not. So many times, the lands as uh, in the landslide studies, we are aware that the study of the landslide is generally based on the study of the past pattern phenomena. So for this, there is a need to understand uh, how and uh, what is the role of documenting the landslide data in the in enhancing the case studies of the landslides. So whenever a landslide happens, it's written a special change of surface morphology occurs due to landslide development. So many times you have seen also whenever the boulders are rolling down, the cobbles are rolling down anywhere. So usually with the passage of time, there is a change in the surface morphology. Morphology means there's in the uh, change in the roughness category of the slope. The direction of the in which the aspect in which the landslide is happening, there's a slight change or major change in the surface texture or surface uh, characteristics of a particular area. So when we talk about the landslide mapping or the landslide studies, we usually come across the <clears throat> four terms. The four terminologies are like inventory, susceptibility, hazard, and risk. When we talk about the disaster, we usually define the disaster in terms of the susceptibility, hazard, and risk. So similarly, in case of the landslide, in order to study the landslide, we need to prepare the susceptibility maps, which leads to the generation of the hazard maps. And this finally helps out in assessing the risk at a particular location. So for assessing the risk, the first and most important initiative is to prevent an inventory. 
inventory of the occurred landslide. For example, right now, if a landslide is happening, what we used to do, we used to collect the uh, data of the like videos, the people are sharing the videos of the landslide happened, the images which are being forwarded in the WhatsApp group or the Facebook or the Twitter. So these are a sort of inventories which are in multiple number. But event inventory not only mean, means the photographs or the videos, this means the area of the occurrence, sorry, area, uh, area at which the uh, location at which the landslide is happening, the area, the spatial characteristics, the temporal characteristics, the everything we need to have in an inventory. So when we go for the generation of the susceptibility maps, in susceptibility, we generally consider the spatial propensity of the future landslide occurrence. What does it mean, the spatial propensity? So spatial propensity means when we design the landslide susceptibility maps, we generally design based on the past studies. Past studies are comprising of the inventories and from these inventories, we go for the generation of the susceptibility maps and in these susceptibility, <coughs> sorry, in these susceptibility maps, we usually focus the, what, what, what could be the probability of the future occurrence of the landslide in that particular location. Next comes to the hazard. When we talk about the hazard, and this is like spatial and temporal probability of future occurrence. So in susceptibility, we define the location, but in case of the hazard, we generally define both the things, the spatial and temporal probability means the location at which the future perspective of the landslide can be there and along with the frequency and magnitude of the landslide. And eventually, all these terminologies lead to the generation or assessment of the risk that is the expected damages or the losses by landslides. So, uh, when we see the landslides, uh, different landslides happening in India, so overall view, if we can see, it's like um, this one global fatal landslide database. So, these um, this organization has been consistently collecting and maintaining the data since 2004 for all over the world. So they usually go for the systematic collection and the of the metadata. The metadata refers to the basic data. So the original data, search tool based in English language that are used to identify relevant reports of landscape activity. So when we talk about India, so uh, approximately 15% of the Indian landmass or 0.49 million square kilometer area is prone to landslide hazards. So why there is a need to study the landslide affected areas or why to create the susceptibility maps or the hazard maps? Because overall, if we see all over the world, total events so far happened, it's 4862 and 75% are occurred in Asia. And as per the UNESCO report, there's an annual estimate of $1 billion of 489,000 kilometers of roads in landslide prone areas and $100 million roads for roads in hilly regions of northern India alone. So there's a need to study the landslide and prepare the inventory and prepare the hazard maps and susceptibility maps. So now the question arises, as I was saying, ki there's a need to document the landslide to study the landslide. So why to document geo disasters or the landslides? Because they turn sometimes as extreme event. So if we go for the definition of an extreme event, extreme event is generally uh, an event which is defined by two terminology, depending on occurrence and the impact. If suppose a landslide is happening and the impact, it's like uh, no, uh, there is none of the casualties happening. So in that particular case, the event will, won't be termed as extreme event. But for example, again, I will say one, uh, again, I will cite one example of the uh, recently occurred uh, rock eyes in Lenche that was on Chamo that was in Chamoli disaster on 7th February, 2021. So the event occurred and the impact was very huge. Kedarnath event occurred, the impact was very huge. So these events are termed as extreme event. So when these extreme event happens, what happens? They generate the extraordinary volume of data. And the quality of the data is produced by these events. So every event produces some amount of the data, which can further be utilized for the generation of the uh, new methodologies to design the new experiments or the models. So such data, which is being generated just after the event is happening, it's called ephemeral or perishable data. Perishable, uh, you all might have uh, heard the word perishable. Take perishable foods. Fruits ke terms hum kehte hai, ho jayenge. So it's like similar to the data also. Perishable, it's like the data will get be uh, lost or wasted or altered or removed during the rescue and recovery activities or by natural agents such as precipitation, wind or following an event. So we need to collect the data as early as possible to 
model our um, to model or prepare our reconnaissance studies to prepare the different methodologies for the prepare effective future mitigation and preparedness so as i say um, whenever a disaster is happening so it it opens up the new laboratories new opportunities and these new laboratories and opportunities leads to the post disaster reconnaissance studies so when these uh, when we talk about the post disaster reconnaissance studies it's like just after the event is happening if the location is accessible we should go and try to collect the data as early as possible so what are the roles of post disaster uh, reconnaissance study or recce studies is to survey the damaging aspects of the event to document the key sites, to develop the well-documented case trees, to identify the opportunities for further research. So, once we are able to uh, collect the data post disaster reconnaissance data, we are able to uh, map the damaging aspects of the event. What the what is exactly the damage was there at a particular location for uh, because of the extreme event happening. So, all these things comes under the post disaster reconnaissance studies. So, reconnaissance data once collected processed, curated, and archived may be used and reused for a range of purposes. It's like um, making discoveries, getting fresh insights, testing and verifying models, reducing uncertainties in the probabilistic models, inspiring new simulation models, including new data-driven methods. <coughs> so now the question arises, how this documented data helps in enhancing knowledge? So it's like we are going for a reconnaissance study, we are collecting the data, we are preparing the archival records and documentation of that particular landslide region. So, how is this is going to help to enhance our knowledge? So, post disaster mitigation measures will majorly focus on facts, not opinions. Usually, what happens if anywhere a disaster is happening, many people have many theories. Once a researcher has one theory, another researcher has another theory, because nobody has visited to a particular site. So once we are able to extract the particular data just after the event, so we can uh, prepare the post uh, disaster mitigation measures based on the facts, not the just opinion ki ye hua tha, ye ho sakta hai, ye hua hoga wahan par, to aisa nahi hoga. Usme hume facts milenge to uh, prepare the uh, risk and relief operation, to uh, prepare the new measures of the response, and many more things. Inspires new simulation models, including new data driven methods. There are two types of the models. So when we talk about the land size assessments, like a uh, knowledge driven and data driven. So uh, by using this data, we can go for the new model generations of the simulations for the data driven technologies. Reduce uncertainties in the probabilistic models, increase resilience of infrastructure, impact future policies and the standards, creation of the high fidelity record of what happened, improve engineering practice and helps in making new discoveries and gaining fresh insights and also leads to the advanced research. <clears throat> in past, uh, the reconnaissance investigator used to collect the data uh, and document the field observation using conventional recording and measurement tool, such as photography, note taking, and the surveying. Usually what we used to do in the, usually the researchers what, what used to do in past, they used to uh, go to the field, they used to collect the photographs, they uh, pen down some of the, uh, uh, parameters for the landslide studies and uh, usually they also take the total station along with them to monitor the uh, to measure the angles or to recreate the scene at the office itself so state of art instrumentation and mobile data collection applications have significantly advanced the ability of field investigation teams to capture quickly perishable written post disaster settings so what does it mean with the passage of the times, with the recent advancement in the technology? Everyone is having a smartphone. Everyone is possessing one or uh, everyone is possessing uh, the smartphones. Uh, everyone is carrying the <clears throat> GPS. Uh, everyone has the GPS in their smartphones. Everyone use WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter. So with the advancement in the technology, we are able to get the information as early as possible. So once we get the information at the earliest phase, there's a need to act accordingly and go for the collection of the data. State of practice data sources. So far, uh, this is the uh, graph which is depicting the imagery based technology and field observations which are being used with the passage of the time from 2012 and 2020. And uh, this uh, image, uh, this graph shows that uh, 
with the passage of the years satellite imagery uav is unmanned aerial vehicle terrestrial radar social media mobile gps field observation these are gaining insights day by day particularly uh, in the past also majorly the investigations used to happen based on the satellite imagery but what is uh, in 2020 if we can see in case of the uav uav has been uh, initiated the uh, usage of UA uh, uav has been started by the researchers and the authors uh, in year 2020 only to study the lands rates Similarly, people have diverted their vision for the investigation of the landslide at the micro level using terrestrial LIDAR also. Now, few researchers are also focusing on the airborne LIDAR. In other as, as I said, social media, Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, mobile GPS apps, field observations. <coughs> Sorry. So, what is the final product of the landslide assessment has to provide the answers to the following questions. So, what we can get from such data, what could happen, what could happen if something changes, what could happen and where, what could happen and where if something changes. So, these are the multiple questions which again and again arise when a disaster is happening. It's like I have written twice these questions. Why? Because what could happen if any disaster is happening, everyone has the curiosity to know why this happened and what could be the reason behind that. Unless and until nobody was at this site. Nobody knows the actual facts regarding the site. We cannot comment. We just um, give a rough opinion that this could be the reason or this could happen. So what could happen if something changes? So we can comment on this also. What can happen if something changes? If the soil texture, if suppose we are going for the field observations, we are collecting the soil, we are making, uh, measuring the characteristics of the soil. So we can implement, we can comment on that if something changes or some uh, properties of the soils are changing, what could be the reason? What could happen further? what could happen and where so we as i said with the help of the data we can go for the generation of the susceptibility maps also so uh, what could happen and where so we can further comment on this key what could happen in future and what could be the what could be the more affected places in the nearby vicinity of the area these are the few examples it's like uh, in 2015 that's a lebanon landslide so uh, you can see on the uh, screen there are two images the first one is the person who is uh, who is using the mobile phone and recording the video of the landslide happening so uh, the author of this uh, this search that's mother at all 2016 they try to analyze the landslide movement based on this video so Usually what is happening whenever the video is being circulated using the WhatsApp or Twitter or Facebook, the authors are trying to get the idea of the landslide movements from these videos. So these videos are very important for which acts as a post reconnaissance for the post reconnaissance studies. This is a snapshot from a video of the landslide, which is showing the lateral displacement of the rock. So in this particular study, the author has used both the satellite data and historical data. And along with that, they have used the drone UAV aerial photography is the drone technology along with the field observation and the mobile device videos. So by this, by using these technologies, they were able to uh, implement the things of the, uh, how the lateral movement occurred, how the landslide happened, what could be the velocity. So these things can be done after the occurrence of a particular landslide. Similarly, uh, uh, in 2018, uh, Kerala landslide occurred. So the authors of the uh, this, um, image the three dimensional reconstruction of the lancer using photo scan so these are the two images which are being produced by the authors they have used again the satellite images to identify and verify the sizes and location as i mentioned in the graph the satellite images are using from very old time and they have some uh, they are being used effectively also so, uh, but uh, with them the authors are also using the 3D scanners for the analysis of the localized deformation and these uh, 3D scanners are used to develop the 3D models of the particular location that are like digital elevation model creation. And along with that, they have used the field observation and investigation to determine the geotechnical properties, slope, uh, slope profile, detonation, fragile areas, and they have done the detailed macro to micro information of the event in this particular study. So, as I was mentioning, uh, there's a need to understand uh, how we can collect the data and implement in our studies. So, one among them is the role of the social media. 
So as I was, uh, as I mentioned, uh, the Chamoli disaster, which happened on uh, February 7, 2021. So these are the few images of the uh, newspaper uh, in which they have highlighted the avalanche in the Chamoli district, flooding after glacier break, Chamoli disaster, scary roar out of nowhere from the hills, Uttarakhand glacial burst. So everyone is talking with some different line, headline. So, but usually what is, what has happened? Nobody was knowing until and unless the researchers visited to that particular site and they released some publications regarding this. So, I would like to mention a few things in this regard only. Uh, I was working on this project, so we went for the reconnaissance study. So, when we went for the reconnaissance study in this particular region, so uh, we tried to collect the data using the drone technology and then we used this data for the creation of the digital elevation model. So, so far, the um, I hope everyone knows what happened in Chamoli. Uh, if not, let me just give a brief. In uh, on 7 February, when Rock Ice Avalanche hit it, the two power projects which were in nearby vicinity to the Ronti Guard, that's Nanda Devi Peak near to the Nanda Devi Peak. So the one project was Rishi Ganga, another was Tapu One. So this is the imagery of the Rishi Ganga. That's a photogrammetic evidence of the recon area one in which we performed the uh, reconnaissance study. So once we created, um, did the drone survey, we were able to generate the digital elevation models and using this digital elevation models, we try to go for the quantity damage assessment of the particular area. On the right hand side of the screen, you can see the pre and post event imageries. So pre and post event imageries, uh, the purple color, pink color box is showing the barrage, which was earlier seen in the Google imagery, but post event there was no, not no signature of the barrage was left. Another, uh, the yellow one shows the impoundment, and as we can see, there is no impoundment in the post event also. Similarly, the pen, uh, similarly the pen stock the residential or temporary buildings, the power house building, everything was washed away when this event occurred. So this is these are the closer picture of the event which happened uh, using this uh, reconnaissance study only what we did. We did the uh, documentation of the specific site areas. For example, the top imagery shows the location of the barrage, empowerment, then tunnel got buried, tunnel or buried pipe. So, when we go for these these type of studies, we are able to mark the things which actually either washed away or got collapsed. And what could be uh, also we can assess for the uh, uh, big boulders or the cobbles which got collected near the ground or near the uh, bank of the river to estimate the velocity of the flow. This was the location of the pin stock, which was uh, quite collapsed. And uh, this is the Rennie bridge, which got collapsed near the Rishi Ganga power project only. This is uh, the left hand side of the abutment of the Rennie uh, bridge. So you can imagine the bridge was very long and uh, it was like completely vanished away because of this uh, flood come disasters. Another was, as I said, uh, the Tapu One area. The, this is the photogrammetic evidence of the Tapu One area. So the first imagery is the Google Earth imagery, which uh, we obtained from the Google Earth. And another one is the post event imagery, which we did from the reconnaissance study. So in this, we can easily see what damage was caused post event. So uh, the location of the damage brush, damage intake, the vanished bridge. There were two bridges and uh, one was completely vanished. Another was there. It was quite collapsed. So this is the closer view of this uh, Tapu One Barrage area. Uh, these photographs ample of times uh, occurred in the many newspapers or Facebook or Twitter. So just to give a closer view of what happened there exactly, this is the Tapu One Barrage area. So in Tapu One Barrage area, as we can see on the right hand side at uh, in the A imagery, one and two is written. So one and two is what and these are. These were the guard rooms or the operational rooms which are being designed. <clears throat> pre-event, uh, we, can, we can see the images of these guide rooms pre-event. But post-event, what is happening? Uh, we are able to see only one room was left and second was vanished away. Similarly, using this data, we can easily go for the calculation of the collapse or the vanished away bridges length, the damaged piers, the big cobbles which got collected uh, near the barrage area, near the piers of the barrage. So by using, by uh, analyzing these sort of things, by analyzing the presence of the cobbles or big boulders nearby vicinity, we can imagine what could be the velocity of this uh, 
uh, floods, which uh, due to which these huge boulders got uh, downstream and got collected nearby the vicinity of the piers. So, in the conclusion, I will like to highlight the uh, Prime Minister 10 point in agenda on the disaster risk reduction. So far, what we are discussing, this covers the 3 main agendas of the 10 point agenda, the agenda 5, which means leverage technology to enhance the efficiency of disaster risk management efforts. So, what does it mean? Efforts made. Efforts uh, must be made to leverage technology to enhance the efficiency of our disaster risk management efforts. This requires use of technology in resource and planning. Example, as many times we have discussed in our webinars, that Indian Disaster Resources Network, it's a creation of the e platform to map the expertise and resources in a highly specialized aspects of disaster response. Along with this, we can also understand by this agenda, we can go for the usage of the advanced techniques to enhance our efficiency to document the disasters and to plan accordingly for the future disasters. Second agenda highlights, uh, uh, sorry, agenda seven highlights uh, utilize the opportunities provided by the social media and mobile technologies for the disaster risk reduction. So we need to utilize the opportunities provided by these uh, technologies to develop a social media strategy for the disaster risk management. Social media is transforming disaster response. So why it is transforming? Because as soon as we get the information, the information spreads like uh, um, all the government officials, all the officers starts working so actively to uh, to prevent the people at a particular disaster area. Because until and unless the information is not spread, it we cannot act. So we have to spread the information of the disaster using our social media technology. Along with this, we have to you try to utilize these sort of uh, social media technologies for the enhancement of the future uh, disaster risk. Agenda 9 uh, says make use of every opportunity to learn from disasters and to achieve that there must be studies on the lessons after every disaster. So uh, we must ensure that every opportunity uh, should be utilized to learn from the disaster and it is not wasted at all. After every disaster, there is a need to undertake research studies to understand the best practices and lesson learned to improve the policy and disaster governance. So <clears throat> until unless we try to uh, search out the opportunities from any sort of any disasters, we can't prepare the good model or the good measure list for the future disaster preparedness activity. So there's a need to learn uh, the every single opportunity you must say from the disasters. So as there is saying in India also, pati se hi avishkar ka janam hota hai, jab tak hume pata nahi lagta ki kitna damage hua, kis tarah se us damage ko cope up kar sakte hai, future preparedness ke liye, tab tak hum kuch nahi kar sakte. So there's a need to understand the ground truth of a particular location. Lastly, I would like to end my presentation with a saying, Batane se gyan doka char ho jata hai, aur na batane se doka zero. So, uh, jitna bhi research hota hai, it's, uh, this, um, I request all the res uh, researchers, stakeholders, every per single person who is indulged in research or doing any sort of thing related to disaster, it should be shared. Because until and unless we share our knowledge with the other people, we can't manage the disaster effectively. Because it's a combined effort. So that's only called capacity building. So we have to share our knowledge to the people. We have to guide everyone. We have to teach everyone to understand the disaster more effectively and efficiently. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Nepali Zinda, for enlightening So, so far, no question is there. Uh, so, we can go ahead. Rupali, please see if any question is there. <clears throat> no question. No, sir. So, no question is there. If I, we don't have any question, then no problem. We can go ahead and if it will come afterwards also, we can send it to Deepali and Deepali will answer that. Dr. Lamprang, now you take the stage for closing. 
for today's program and you invite them for tomorrow to join at Perfect. the same time. Okay, sir. Thank you for all the participants and the panel, uh, panelists, sir. And can you join the same time, uh, same link for tomorrow also? Tomorrow is the last day of the program. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, I would like to add a few points in this. Uh, I request the participants, as I mentioned every time in our webinars and training sessions, uh, the participants who are participating for the sake of uh, certification, I request them to kindly attend the session at least for 80% of the attendance. Uh, then only you get eligible for the certificates on all the three days. It's not like you attend the session for one day, 80%, another 20% or 30%. Then you become eligible for the certificate. It's not like that. You have to attend the session at least for 80%. Then only you will get the certificates. So, and I also request the participants to kindly make the session interactive uh, so that our speakers are like uh, fun filled with the, by giving the sessions. Because it's like uh, we're giving the sessions and we're not getting any response. Um, we feel like nobody is listening to us. So try to make the sessions interactive as much as you can. Thank you so much. Thank you. We will meet again uh, tomorrow at the same time. Thank you so much. So we can close the session right now and tomorrow we'll join again.